Oh, Mama, all engineers are boys. How would you feel if your four-year-old daughter said this to you? Once upon a time, I was working from home as my daughter was unwell. She was sitting right next to me, and I was on a conference call. She could see the brilliant faces of all of my brilliant colleagues. And then, in sheer curiosity, typical of any four-year-old, asked me who those faces were and what they did. As most of us with kids and conference calls are guilty of doing, I put myself on hold, and I started explaining to her, oh, that's Kurt, he's my manager, and he's a software engineer. That's Eric, he sits right next to me, and he's a software engineer. That's Alex, we're working on a project together, and he's a software engineer too. As I got to the fourth and fifth, she interrupted me and said, oh, mama, so all engineers are boys. I was stunned, amused, and bummed. She was noticing something that I had conditioned myself to ignore, that I was the only woman in the room. Well, in this case, a virtual room. Fact is, women in tech, and more specifically, women in engineering, are a bit of a minority. And children are very clever parsers of patterns. They see the world through eyes that are not preconditioned. So, where do they get this conditioning from? Let's think about the books, the stories that we read to our children. Less than 5% of kids' books feature characters of color in lead roles. Further, the content of books tends to be based on traditional gendered professions. Less than 1% of kids' books are themed on STEM or sports adventures. So why is it important that books do something at all? We were all kids once. What were some of your favorite books? For me, books like The Alchemist and The Little Prince made me wonder about the origins of everything. They fed my curiosity that would eventually create a career in tech for me. So then, why is it even important that characters in books look like us? As I think of myself today, sometimes a bit of a hesitant leader, sometimes with a bit of an imposter syndrome, I wonder. I wonder if the characters in my favorite books had looked like me, how that would have propelled me to be a bold dreamer, a risk taker, a non-hesitant leader. Stories are not just figments of imagination. They're also mediums of manifestation. I believe by diversifying characters and voices in children's books, we can empower little readers to envision themselves as future leaders. Because missing characters in books translate to missing leaders in boardrooms, labs, and sports fields. And our world needs all of them. As a mother of two, a woman in tech, a person of color, and a first-generation immigrant, I care very deeply that the race and color and gender of my children is not a deterrent to their dreams. I want to bust this bias, not just for my kids, but for all kids. I want us all to imagine a world where every child is the hero of the storybook. What if Alice, on her way to Wonderland, had a propensity towards mathematical adventures? What if Goldilocks had beautiful black hair with tinges of gold when the moon hit it? What if the mother and child in Goodnight Moon weren't actually biologically related? I love these stories. They have beautiful life lessons. But I think we can amplify these lessons and make them more relatable by putting our kids into them. There are eight different parts of the brain that get triggered when children read stories. Books are pathways into their neural networks where they reinforce patterns, but also where they form biases. We need to rethink the books that we read to our children. We also need to reimagine the storytelling experience for it to stay relevant in today's digitally evolving world. 
We can't really go back and change these stories, or can we? I will come back to that. You see, tech is my hood. This is what I studied, and this is what I've been working in for the past 15 years. But sadly, women are only about 20, 25% of the tech workforce. What's more concerning is that less than 5% of tech founders, the original creators of technological products, are women. Research tells us that girls start doubting their intelligence in STEM by the time they're six years old, not due to lack of intelligence or ability or skills, but due to social conditioning. Why is this the case? Could it start with something as simple as the stories we are choosing for our girls and our daughters? And so I took up a passion project at my workplace, Google, with the intent to use technology to reimagine books, to create inclusive stories at scale in order to re-level inspiration for kids. And as a first step was born the book, Ara, the Star Engineer, a story of smarts and grit, where a young girl of color, Ara, wants to solve a big problem of counting all the stars in the sky, but is not sure how. Along the way, she meets superheroes, characters based on real life women engineers of diverse backgrounds who teach her computing concepts. In the end, Ara and her sidekick droid, Didi, discover a cool algorithm to solve any big problem. An algorithm comprised of courage, creativity, coding, and collaboration. My colleagues and I then went on to create various other modalities for the storytelling experience to stay relevant and relatable and inspiring and magical. We made the book travel beyond paper to a world of virtual reality and 3D. We saw kids gawk at the enormousness of a data center and the tininess of a processor chip. Experiencing stories in VR can sometimes create a level of awe and learning which isn't always attainable in 2D. We created a voice assistant enabled story time, so as parents and children read books together, words in the narrative trigger sound effects and light effects, really bringing the story to life. This allowed kids to make very unique sensory associations, such as debugging software is something that produces typing sounds. It has nothing to do with squashing bugs or bees. Remember when I spoke about being able to rewrite our classics or recode our classics? We are now experimenting with artificial intelligence, AI, to render protagonists in books, the heroes in books, to look like the reader reading the book, so that the hero of the book does not default to white or brown or black, but to the child reading the book. We used AI to make Ara look like that little girl who happens to have leukemia, but has probably never seen herself in a book before. Or that girl for whom her green hair is a very strong part of her identity. Or that girl who's proud to wear her hijab. Or that girl who wants to own her mixed indigenous roots more deeply. Technology is a tool that can be used to reimagine our classics rather than replace them. We can use tech to give children the power to visualize themselves as the hero of the story and of real life. The stories we read as kids correlate with the reality we manifest as adults. I grew up in India in the 80s sitting under mango trees and reading science fiction, listening to Bollywood songs and solving physics equations. While studying computer science, I would visualize the internals of a computer as Alice in Wonderland, racing with processor chips 
and reasoning with circuit boards. I was also that kid who worshipped Dana Scully from X-Files and Mr. Spock from Star Trek. There is even a phenomena dubbed as the Scully effect, a research that showed more than 70% of the girls who grew up watching Scully landed careers in STEM. I'm a life outcome of the Scully effect. Heck, even my master's thesis was based on computational criminology. How desperate was I to be like Spock and Scully? Similar to the Scully effect, I have now seen a glimmer of the ARA effect in action around the world. Since the book launched a year ago, it is being translated in 10 plus languages and countries around the world. This is a story from a young girl of Hispanic background who lives in the Bronx. She was so inspired by the book, she wrote her own book called Isabella, the Space Engineer, and wants to be one. This is Jian from Beijing, who when asked to draw what an engineer looks like, drew a picture of her own self. Here are two girls, one from Canada and one from Australia, who both dressed up as their favorite character, Ara, the engineer, ready to solve problems. Here's a girls robotics team in Portugal that actually built and coded a real robot and named it DD, based on the robot in the book. So many children from around the world who sent us stories. Here's one from a girl who wants to create nanobots that enter human brain to cure diseases, and also flying nanobots that go into alien lands that bring back cures for diseases. My daughter and I were at the Shanghai Book Fair for the launch of the book in China. And a journalist here asked her, what do you want to be when you grow up? Oh, I want to be an author and an engineer, was her instant reply. This is the power of inclusive characters in books. If one book could do so much, what if we had 10, 100, or all of our classics? What could inclusive stories at scale achieve? So, in order to solve big problems for the world, let's not overlook the importance of something very simple and pure, storybooks. If you are one of those creative techie types, why not create new ways and mediums to make stories inclusive at scale? If you are trying to solve the diversity problem in the workplace, why not fund more of such initiatives that bring inclusive storytelling into the lives of kids very early on, when they're six years old, not 26 or 16? And if you are a book lover, why not choose to read those books to our kids that can empower them to be the hero at whatever they choose? So that all of our daughters and girls can see and believe that engineers are just people. Thank you.